So I am bored. I am really tired today because of the vaccine. As you know, object detection is one of the most popular tasks in computer vision, where you are given an input image and you want to infer and output the box coordinates on the bounding boxes of the objects you want to detect in the image. It has a lot of applications. Your camera does face detection to order focus better. Facebook the people detection when user upload images and so does smart security camera. You can also apply this to medical images to detect abnormalities. I haven't practiced this task in a while, so today I'm going to try to build a uh, object detection system from scratch using PyTorch. First, we're going to define the problem, inspect the data, and build the data loader pipeline. Second, we're going to implement a detection system with I think it's going to be a deep learning model. Uh, and lastly, we're going to train an eval. Let's get started. Uh, for our problem, we are going to do a Doge detector. Uh, because Doge is a very trendy meme these days. Uh, and this guy, Elon Musk, is the so-called uh, the Doge father. Uh, as you know, he's an amazing, uh, absolutely brilliant uh, scam artist. Since we are going to use machine learning, we need some uh, data for training. And we also need some test images. There is an Doge image data set, so I decided to make one. I searched for Doge on Google Images and downloaded them using imagecyborg.com. Then I used uh, labelbox.com uh, service to manually annotate uh, bounding boxes on these images. At the end, I got around 300 images, two thirds of which contain Doge objects. Now, 300 is tiny and you cannot train a deep learning model with just that, but I'm not training a model from scratch. I'm going to fine-tune a model that was already trained on the ImageNet dataset. I wanted to make this quick, but uh, note that clearly defining your task and its evaluation or measurements, uh, and also collecting high-quality data and label, is the first most crucial step in the ML app development cycle. Alright, let's get down to business. I have implemented uh, the, everything on this uh, Jupyter notebook here. Uh, let's go through it. Uh, the first step is just uh, importing all the libraries that I need. And next, we're going to create a data set object. Uh, so it, uh, I'm here inheriting from the Torch uh, data set object. Basically, uh, I just initialize the set with the path to the data folder that I have uh, contain all the images of Doge that I have. Uh, and initialization is simply just read uh, the images, the labels. Uh, I put a label in the JSON file. Um, also split the data into uh, train and test half half. Uh, and just read the images. Uh, Read the images here. I'm gonna, we're reading the label here from the JSON file. And in order to for this to work at a dataset object, we need to implement uh, the get item so that we can get uh, any item in our dataset given it index. Uh, we need the image data and the bounding box labels. Uh, we need to implement also the length function to see to, to check by uh, so that we can know how many items uh, are there in the data set. Uh, I also created the simple function visualization just to uh, just to output just to print uh, the image. So for example here um, I create a trend set which has 158 uh, items and I'm just show the image uh, corresponding to the item 133 and you see if I query uh, that item I will receive the data structure which is we have the index of that item and we have the image data which is kind of a numpy object and once I created the test set so we have the trend set and the test set uh, both of them had the same size so I'm going to train with 158 uh, images and test on 158. Next, we define data loaders. 
with uh, an extremely useful data pipeline utilities that PyTorch provides. What it does is that it iterates through the dataset and combines items into batches of items, and our model will work on the batch. Uh, so the reason it is so useful is because it does this extremely fast uh, by doing the computation in parallel threads in advance. Uh, this is called prefetching the data. If you implement your training naively, data fetching and pre-processing can be a major bottleneck. All right, first step done. The second step is to implement our uh, detection system. We are going to create the retainer net model. Uh, and here I'm using uh, Todd region implementation. I'm not implementing it from scratch. Uh, as I said, I, was, uh, I guess I was lying. <laughs> but let me take a step back and explain what kind of object detection approaches there are. Object detection is a computer vision task, and there are different kinds of methods to approach this. One of the most successful kind of approach is that what I call sliding window classification. In the system, we assume that we have an image classifier, and we run it on sub-windows or crops of the input image at different positions and scales. Then we can output the bounding boxes corresponding to the positive sub-windows as detection result. Till today, this is still the most competitive approach. Of course, many improvements have been made. For example, instead of sliding window, looking at loss and loss of different positions and scales, more efficient techniques were proposed to suggest smaller number of root windows to look at. Then, the old school image classifier is replaced with a cool, shiny deep learning model. At this stage, we arrive at the so called RCNN. Next, deep learning is applied to the object proposal generation step 2 because why not? This is very efficient because the arrival of fully convolutional network and feature pyramid network, these ideas make it possible to craft a network that processes this image once and then produce multiple outputs corresponding to sub-windows at different positions and scales of the input image. This is the faster RCNN. To make it even more efficient, we can even get rid of the classification step and let the fully convolutional network do everything and more. This is the approach of Multibox from Google, RetinaNet, and YOLO which is very popular. By the way, this design that you can classify an object, even the window content, is taking advantage of the domain expert knowledge with respect to this task, which is that the object label can be inferred by just the content within the window. Now, in most cases of object detection, this is true and helpful, but here are some scenarios where it might be an invalid assumption. Finally, besides this box and region nonsense, there is other ways of formulating object detection as a machine learning problem, but we will not discuss them here. All right, so we are using a, reti a retina net model here with uh, with the residual network 50 layers at our backbone. This here is how you run uh, the image with the model. So here I just created uh, some kind of random images with the size 224, 224. Uh, and I set it to eval mode. So you just call the model on the list of images. And the result will be a list of detection results. So there is the box uh, field where it contains the bounding box formation. Uh, then so the score fields uh, with its kind of detection score. And then there's a label with the class of that object. In case you have uh, multiple, uh, you want to detect multiple kind of uh, objects. Uh, here, I get an image from my test set. So I get the third image from my test set. Um, and I transfer it into the format that, uh, yeah, that the model expected. So it is like channel, height, and width. And I normalize the pixel value. I convert it from integer to floating point between 0 and 1. And then I run with it, and to see the detection values that I got. So it, uh, it detects a lot of bosses in these images. And the score, the detection scores go from, I think, the highest to the lowest. 
So we only we're gonna be only interested in the highest score detection, right? And the label is I think um, from I guess the image net data set or the Microsoft Coco, I don't know with uh with kind of data set they train this on, but this is a pre-trained uh retina net model. Here I just visualize the top two detection result. Uh, so I highlight the bounding box by making it darker. As you can see, uh, the top detections are the bounding box corresponding to uh, the dog and the cat. All right, so that is how you run um, the model in Evalmo on images. Now, during training, you actually need two parts. So you need the images uh, but you also need the targets. So the targets is kind of the labels, uh, the training labels or the training supervision. With a special structure, it had two fields. Uh, the first one is the box, with the, like the ground truth building box. Uh, and the second field is the labels, with the labels that objects. Uh, so if you pass the two to the model in train mode, it will return uh, a special result, which is contain lost information. Basically, it has um, it has two loss. I get it has classification loss, which is some values, and then it has a bad in box regression loss. The first one is for classify if it's an object or not, and if it's not an object, uh, would be the class of the object in case you have more than one class. Um, if not, then it's just like foreground and background. The second loss is for regressing uh, the box box coordinate uh, to be to, to make it more uh, pre uh, precise more accurate okay that's all that's all uh, that how you run the model uh, in eval in train so the training step is quite simple if you have everything in place first you create an optimizer uh, and you need to tune uh, learning rate and one channel a little bit so you want to start with a like, high learning rate and then gradually reduce it until you find one that works and then you implement the training loop uh, so here i implemented a very simple training loop uh, where you know i do this with 50 uh epoch for each report we don't iterate using the train data loader that uh, we have created and uh, the step for each training step basically just get the images out of the batch uh, like pre-process it to the format that the model is expecting and then we extract the label out uh, into the format that uh, the model is expecting to and especially here uh, because for example the my annotation is left top and then the width and the height right but the model is reflecting like x1, x2, y1, y2. So I have to do some like uh, pre-processing on that. And also the label because I only, I do those detections. So there's only one class. You, I only need one label here. So the label here is just a constant. All right. So when we have uh, the data, which uh, uh, run the model on that, it return the lost structures. Then I'm going to compute a total of it, just the sum of uh, the two loss, the classification loss and the box regression loss, and then uh, make a gradient step, uh, and then also uh, recall the loss value so that I can visualize them later. Uh, so as you can see, um, the loss I think I print out the average loss uh, every airport. So you can see that the loss is going down, and uh, at the end. The loss is 0 0.034, and I think this done in half an hour. Now I, I plot the loss value here, you see that uh, I went out nicely. All right, so that is a trend. And like I should do eval here, like regularly too, but I didn't. Uh, but here is an eval. I don't, I didn't do a more legit eval. Uh, because uh, computing like uh, let like more legit eval matrix for object detection is um, is kind of uh, pain in the ass. Like for classification, you can implement accuracy matrix with like five lines of code. But if you want to implement uh, the metric for object detection, 
it's going to be like thousand lines of code. So there's some uh, library that we will provide it for that, but I'm too lazy. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to just run, I'm going to just iterate through the test set. Uh, and I'm going to run my model on it and I'm going to visualize the results. So I am just visualize the top, uh, the top detection and show it here and just qualitatively look at the image and see if, uh, if it's working or not. I'm going to bring out a score too. Okay. So uh, first of all, here I highlight the, 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 the top detection, right? This is the score. That so light works. Uh, no detection here. Uh, this is kind of, uh, I'm not sure if it's really, this is like a form positive to me. So this work, uh, this is a form positive. But actually, if you look at the score, it's really low, right? So if you you uh, threshold score, if you choose a threshold that's high enough, these four negative will be removed. Okay, so this is a low score, right? This is a high score, so this is really good. So this is a good, a true positive. Uh, to the low score, very high score, you see. Uh, this is a good, good, good detection, good result, good result. Now this is looking, I think, really well for a very small test set. Remember that I only traded on 158 images. Now this one is interesting. Uh, the score is kind of high enough. <laughs> All right. Lastly, I also like package this into a Flask app and put it online. Uh, you can access it at doge.nam.ai. Okay, it look really cool, right? And uh, you can upload new images here. The Doge detector is now online, give it a try.